welcome to our final preview show of the season where BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple is virtually alongside me as we look ahead to Sunday's huge game in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up. We'll look back at last Sunday and that 2-0 defeat to Southampton. We'll also hear from Eddie Howe as he gives his preview for the weekend. And finally, we will discuss that big game at Goodison Park, having heard from Eddie Howe. Well, let's start back at last Sunday. Chris, they seem to have the possession, they seem to have the chances, but it just didn't quite fall for them, did they? Did it against Southampton? No, quality of finishing was the difference, wasn't it? I mean, Danny Ings hadn't done anything in the game and then Bosch, it's in the corner. Uh, a couple of other chances they had as well. Southampton, um, obviously, uh, Ramos made a couple of good saves to keep the score at 1-0, including from the penalty from Danny Ings, which was a very sort of, uh, it, was, it was a generous penalty as far as Bournemouth because it wasn't a great penalty, but at that moment, it was a key turning point in the game. Uh, and then, of course, we get on to the late heartbreak, which to be honest, I'm still recovering from. Um, I, I just, heaven forbid, nothing like that happens this weekend because I don't think I could pick myself up to drive home from Everton if that happens. I might have to stay up there for a week before I could get over it. But uh, just from the, and not, you know, ultimately, as we said at the time, a point in that situation didn't really change that much because the way things have panned out since is that Bournemouth still need to go to Everton and win. But for Sam Surridge, of course, absolute heartbreak, you know, thinking you've played a, a, a major role right at the end there. And just the high it gives everybody to, to sail into this final week rather than having to literally drag yourself off the floor right at the end. And, of course, for Saints to go up and score another one at the other end straight afterwards was, a, I guess, a salt in the wound. But, yeah, ultimately, I think it was just clinical finishing. I thought Bournemouth, there, were lots, there was lots to like about the performance. It was an entertaining game. Two teams sort of swinging from end to end. Um, but ultimately, sticking the ball in the net was the problem. It certainly was heartbreaking at the end, wasn't it? You know, Sam Sarah just called the linesman didn't flag initially. And then, you know, you go back a couple of weeks and the same thing sort of happened against Spurs. Yes, it hit Joshua King's hand, but right at the end and you think you've got something and then all of a sudden it's taken away. Yeah, the only thing I'll say about those two decisions is they were both the correct decisions. So it wasn't too much. It felt harsh and it was such a fall from a great height at the time. But ultimately, they weren't mistakes. I think the, probably the Joshua King at Man City ones may be slightly harder to take because that is literally millimetres. And if there's no VAR, then that one doesn't get, fla doesn't get flagged at the time. Uh, and that one stands, and that could be a different game then. So who knows a point in that game, or, or even more, that City could have changed the landscape completely. But yeah, the, I think the hard ones to take uh, are the ones where you have that emotion, you have the massive high, and then it's sucked away from you. Literally, someone takes the toy back or takes the chocolate out of your hand. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's so tough to take. And you could see from the reactions at the end, you know, Aaron Ramsdale sort of slumped against his post and, and how he came out so quickly to, to put such sort of emotional and, and sort of stirring words together in terms of you can really see the depth of the feeling. Um, and again, I've said it so many times, but it speaks so well and from the heart for a young man. And it was that kind, I think, of, of sort of post-match response that was exactly what the, the Cherries fans wanted to hear and wanted to see how much uh, he cared and how much it meant to the players as well, because people have... have presumably wrongly assumed at times this season that the players haven't cared because some of their performances haven't been up to it. But as I've said many times, the players are certainly trying. Um, and certainly you can see from Aaron Ramsdale's reaction and some of the others who just slumped to the floor that um, they gave it everything. And ultimately, when you have it snatched away like that, it's, it's very, very tough to take. And I wanted to talk about Aaron Ramsdale. Obviously, two goals conceded, but saved a penalty and made some huge saves in the second half to keep the score down, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's got to be player of the season for me. I would think Nathan Ake obviously has had a brilliant season again. We expect that from him. He's a class player. Um, whether we see him again, as we say, this weekend, we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. But yeah, Aaron Ramsdale, for his first season in the Premier League, and let's wind right back to August, when you know, fully a year ago nearly, when I don't think we saw that selection coming on the first day of the season because Mark Travers had ended the season, of course, with those couple of games. Uh, Arta Boric was obviously still at the club as well. Asmir Begovic's future was a bit up and down and he ended up going to AC Milan. But... I don't think many saw Aaron Ramsdale coming in, um, having been at AFC Wimbledon, to, uh, to be promoted straight into the Premier League. But he's had a fantastic season. Of course, there are goals that have gone in that he'll be disappointed with. There'll be decisions that he's made that he'll be disappointed with. But that is a young goalkeeper learning on the job. But, you know, you only have to look at the saves percentages, the save shot, uh, shot saved numbers. He's been in the top two or three all season for saves made behind Dubravka at uh, Newcastle and a couple of others as well. So, yes, he hasn't had the clean sheets he wanted, but last week, again, was you know three or four excellent saves, good decisions coming sliding out um, to deny people. The penalty save obviously could have been huge at the time as well. So, he's had a brilliant season. He's a, he's a great lad on and off the field. He's a real character. He's a sort of character that fans engage with and, and like, and that's why he's been so popular at other clubs he's been to as well, including Wimbledon, where he became a, a bit of a cult hero 
for what he did last season. So having helped Wimbledon stave off the drop last season, maybe if Bournemouth can pull it off, Aaron Ramsdale, maybe we don't need to look any further for the lucky charm. Absolutely. And going into this final game of the season, the key thing is, is that they're still in it. Watford obviously losing to Man City. That Villa result wasn't ideal, but they're still in it and they're still, still in with a chance. I don't know about you, but I was a bag of nerves on Tuesday afternoon waiting for that game to come along. Um, and then suddenly it was here and you're like, OK, well, in two hours it could, could all be over. Um, thankfully, Watford were absolutely dreadful. Um, City, you know, could have scored six or seven easily there. The goal difference was obviously huge, um, although the other results, as it's sort of factored now, doesn't, doesn't really have an impact, the goal difference, um, with the way things have gone. But, um, yeah, in terms of sort of hammering Watford and leaving them on a real low going into the last game of the season, that, that was about as good a job as City could have done for Bournemouth, I think. And then, of course, Arsenal, the absolute opposite, as well as City did. Arsenal, you know, didn't show up at all against Villa. FA Cup hangover or whatever it was. Um, it was a poor performance for Arsenal when Bournemouth needed something from them. So let's hope that Arsenal are... They, they shouldn't need to play that well to beat Watford you, you, on what we saw last weekend, put it that way. The bigger worry for me this weekend would be Villa getting something at West Ham, who obviously have just clambered themselves away from it. But yeah, Tuesday was a, a very nervous night, I'm sure, for all Cherries fans watching. Although, you know, the Watford game being key, the fact it went 2-0 pretty quickly, I think as soon as the third one goes in, people are probably thinking, yeah, that's, we're going to be OK here for another few days at least. But anyhow, opted to go and play crazy golf with his sons rather than sitting and watching it, which is probably the best option, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it does all come down to Sunday and Eddie Howe has been speaking to AFCB TV previewing that one. So, Eddie, a huge game against Everton on the weekend. The fact that we're still in it certainly has to be a positive, doesn't it? Yeah, because after the Southampton game, it looked like possibly we could go to Everton out of contention totally. So we have a chance and where we have a chance, there's hope. We will give it everything to try and achieve it. So our mindset going into this game is to try and win. Um, and that's all we can focus on. So that's all our energies will be going to give in a good performance. And just watching the championship conclusion on Wednesday night, does that give you even more belief, you know, seeing the way that Barnsley got out of it and even the situation with Nottingham Forest and Swansea as well? Yeah, things can change very quickly. So even with 20 minutes to go, you talk about the, the Swansea and Nottingham Forest situation, how quickly that turned around. And it just goes to show that um, even how the game's going, we, we can still be in it right to the end. So the message from me to the players is to never give up and We'll never stop and just hope we get a little bit of luck the other way. And just finally, how have preparations gone for the weekend and what's the mood in the camp been like? I think the lads were disappointed, a little bit subdued earlier in the week. Um, naturally disappointed from the Southampton game, but I think they bounced back very quickly and the training's been very high in terms of intensity and energy and effort levels. So I've been pleased and we'll be ready for the kickoff. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking to AFCB TV earlier on today. Chris, as we just said, you know, it, it all comes down to Sunday. It's make or break, isn't it? It's make or break. It's, uh, let's pick out the positives first of all. There's no goal difference or goal scored or any of that nonsense to worry about. It's simply win. 1-0 will do. 9-8 will do. Anything will do as long as the other teams uh, slip up and of course they can slip up one one nils all round I tweeted it earlier in the week and for some reason it was very popular and got lots of likes I may, maybe because it was bringing I guess home the reality of the situation that actually no one needs to go and score three or four it's not as unlikely as some of the swings we saw in the championship on Wednesday night which again Eddie Howe mentioned his presser um, was a bit of an inspiration actually that Swansea clambered into the playoffs from absolutely nowhere Barnsley hauled themselves out of it Brentford stuffed it up even Fulham stuffed it up as well in terms of automatic promotion. So, and West Brom couldn't, didn't win either, but got lucky. So, you know, those swings in the championship the other day, I think, give a bit of hope that strange things can happen. And nothing as outlandish as that needs to happen. Um, two teams, you know, they need to lose that on, on paper and on form probably should. Villa maybe could argue that, that you know, their win over Arsenal gives them a chance. But I think that the biggest problem is, is Bournemouth winning at Everton um, because they're unbeaten under, they've won every game under Ancelotti. Um, at, uh, at home, sorry, they're unbeaten under Ancelotti in every game at home since he's come in in the Premier League. Uh, they've had a, you know, an in and out restart. They've drawn quite a few at home. Obviously, managed to get a point against Villa, which actually you know was very very important in their their last home game. And then went and had a great win at Sheffield United. So a bit inconsistent. Uh, they've sort of tweaked one or two players around, brought a couple of young lads in as well. But the thing is that Bournemouth know they can go there and win 1-0. I don't think it means that they'll sit off. I don't think it means they'll just stay in the game. I think they'll go and play their normal way. Eddie Howe says that they're going to try and keep the other information from other games away 
from the players on the pitch. And of course, you haven't got the, the factor of fans with radios up against their ear or checking Twitter in the ground when the word soon spreads. You haven't got any of that this time. It was interesting to hear the other day in the Championship, one of the Brentford coaching staff was shouting out news from other games um, to keep them in touch. I'm not sure we'll see Neil Moss or, or Stephen Purchase or anybody shouting from the stands for this game. Um, but it's all about doing the job at Goodison Park. The most frustrating thing out of anything would be to see the other two teams go and do their, or go and fail, and Bournemouth to, to not get the win they need. Absolutely. You said it there. You know, I was going to say that the task of Bournemouth is simple. They have to win. They would hate to, you know, pick up a draw or, or not win, get a, get a defeat, and then see, you know, Watford and Aston Villa not pick up any points themselves. That would, that would be heartbreaking, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that would be the worst. Eddie anyhow Howe admitted that, you know, if they couldn't do their part of the deal, but other people did, uh, you know, for the Bournemouth part of the deal anyway. Uh, the, the stats are all point to Bournemouth not having a chance against Everton. Bournemouth have lost their last nine goals, uh, last nine games away from home. Everton have won all four meetings at Goodison in the Premier League. Bournemouth have never got a point there. They've scored 12 goals in the process. Uh, it's Bournemouth's eighth season, eighth season, by the way, in a row, playing away on the final day of the season. And they haven't got a great record uh, on the last day of the season either. So, yeah, it's uh, all the stats on paper would say that it's, it's looking difficult. But all these stats, of course, are, are in a competitive season. They're not about a game when Everton have got nothing to play for. We saw with Southampton, very similar area of the table. Nothing to play for apart from a bit of local pride and Ralph Hasenhutl's sort of internal motivation. And they turned up and and put in an all-action performance. I'm not sure we'll see the same level of performance from Everton that we saw from Southampton last week, um, because, well, for, for various reasons. But um, they have got two strikers, you know, Richarlison and Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who I'm sure will be troubling the England selectors and maybe, you know, might nudge Callum Wilson down the pecking order as far as England are concerned. They've both got 13 goals in the Premier League this season. So, uh, yeah, they, they certainly got their threats. Uh, as I said, the Goodison Park crowd is normally quite a big factor there as well. So without them, you know, that might be a little bit more of a leveller. But again, the intensity for Bournemouth has got to be there. You know, it's a game that they have to win. They have to go out and score a goal at some point in the game. So it's, it's going to be about, you know, there's no point again in, in creating 30 chances and not scoring one. Got to put the ball in the net, backside, anything, just not off an arm. Anything, anything apart from an arm, brilliant. Speaking of, of Everton, what have you made of them since the restart? You mentioned that, that draw with Villa. They managed to get one back to get the point. Their home form has been good, but it has, again, it's been a bit mixed for them, hasn't it? Has been a bit mixed, yeah. Lost heavily at Wolves, uh, beat Leicester at home, obviously. Drew with Southampton at home, uh, drew with Villa at home as well. So, yeah, it's been a bit mixed. Ancelotti's obviously, you know, a bit of an evolution there as well. Great coach, you know, they're probably punching above their weight, Everton, with, with the quality of coach they've been able to bring in there. So, you know, still a bit of evolution there for Ancelotti, I'm sure, and I'm sure they'll get better with a, with a transfer window as well to bring in a few players that he would like at the club and maybe cash in on, on one or two others as well. But, yeah, I mean, they'll be a very, very well-drilled well side, that is for sure. Um, it's not an, not an easy-looking game, but I think there are worse games to have, to be honest with you, because um, they're not one of the teams that play the way that Bournemouth struggle against, which is being very organised, banks of four, no space. That's not the kind of game that Bournemouth will get there. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it isn't a bad fixture, albeit all the stats are not in Bournemouth's favour this weekend. But... And as long as Bournemouth turn up and put in, you know, the sort of performance that they need to, if Bournemouth don't turn up, then that's going to be a huge frustration to, to everybody. I can't see a way that they won't turn up. We've seen glimmers, you know, well, more than glimmers. We saw great patches of play against Southampton, great patches of play against City, Leicester. They need to just turn that into a 90-minute performance, take chances, stay patient, I think, is a, is a key part of it as well, because naturally panic can start to set in. I'm sure it will be among supporters if it gets to maybe an hour gone and the scores are still level. Um, and also, if you, get, if you can get the first goal, which has been a bit of an Achilles heel, don't let the lead slip as well. Um, you know, think of Manchester United away, a different kettle of fish, I know, but got the first goal and then let the lead slip. So that's been a, a bit of a, I guess, a, an Achilles heel. But they have showed if they concede the first goal, they can come back. So in recent games, anyway, the Leicester game obviously immediately springs to mind. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about just putting in the performance that the fans would look for. And if you give it everything on the last day and it doesn't fall your way or the goalkeeper has the game of his life, then on the day you can say we gave it everything we can. Unfortunately, the, the previous 37 games will ultimately be what would cost the team Premier League status. But let's hope we're not talking about that come Monday morning. Absolutely. And just finally, on the injury news, Eddie Howe said in his pre-match press conference, Adam Smith should be OK and Nathan Ake, they'll need a, a very late call on. Yeah, it's hard to know what to do with Nathan Ake, isn't it? Because as we mentioned before, we weren't expecting to see him again. Eddie always maintained there was an outside chance he may make the Everton game before the end of the season. Do you risk playing someone who's clearly your best defender 
but is only 75% fit. Um, also, with respect to the player going forward, if he is going to go somewhere, um, you know, is Nathan Ake going to risk himself? He's the, the kind of guy you'd expect would, um, actually, knowing what he's like. But is it fair to throw him in if he's 70% fit? It's probably down to the player to say, well, if you're not 100% fit, but you want to go out there and try and do a job for us, we back you um, to do that. If you're a manager, you're saying, do I want my centre-half possibly only running at 70% fitness, having that injury in the back of his mind, maybe making a different decision? Or do you go with Steve Cook and Lloyd Kelly, who are you know, both fit, have had solid couple of games? Um, so that's a, that's a tough one all round, really. I guess physically, uh, in terms of what's up for grabs, morally, um, it's, that is a hard one. And I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be the one having to make that decision. But I'm sure Eddie Howe and Nathan Ake will come to the right decision. Adam Smith's back in the fold, but I wouldn't... Unless his experience is useful in this situation, but he can be a bit, a bit of a hothead, Adam Smith, at times as well. So, um, and maybe he would probably say hasn't had the, the greatest run of form since restart. So, Jack Stacey hasn't done a lot wrong. And if, in a game that Bournemouth need to win, I think Jack Stacey as an attacking option is probably pretty good as well. We said that a number of times before. So, yeah, there's some, some tough decisions to be made. Just before you wrap up, by the way, and you go, that's it, we're off. I just want to say thank you to you, Zoe, for having me on your preview show every single week Aww. throughout the season. We've won 38 games, I think now, even more with cup games as well. It's been a pleasure. Sorry to the fans for always rambling on and never giving you any time to speak, Zoe. But it's been lovely, and let's hope, fingers crossed, we are back previewing the Premier League next season. Oh, well, it's certainly been a lot of fun. Thank you for your input as well. And we should also mention our video editors as well, who work tirelessly every Friday with a press conference and preview show to put this all together. So certainly thanks to them and thanks to you. We better well. name them as well, by the way. James Hart and Michael Gribbins and Rowan. There we go. And, and Rowan, ben. don't forget Rowan. <laughs> and Rowan, everybody. Perfect. Well, that is all we've got time for today. We will be there on Sunday bringing you all the coverage. You can listen to Chris and Willow on AFCB TV completely free for free live commentary. There we go. That's all we've got time for today and hopefully see you in the Premier League next season.